yeah. the Tyson Fury that phones on with a load of old right, I want to be paid half a billy, yeah. or I've got the ump because someone's criticizing something I've done. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. thank you very much, not interested in you. Sure. That's not a superstar, that's a child. Welcome to Talk Boxing with Simon Jordan and Spencer Oliver. For reasons best known to ourselves, we have to tell you what episode number it is every week. So this is episode 41. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing to the channel and keep leaving your comments in the question section below. But let's get on with this week's show, Spence. How are you, mate? Simon, really well, mate. Nice yourself? to see you. Yeah, not you bad. Too. Not bad. Um, last week, we saw the beginning of what I would call the carnival of horror, which is the um, Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou um, fight. And we saw the press conferences. I'm assuming you were there. Yeah, no, I wasn't at the press. Were you conference. not there? No, 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 okay. No, but you would have seen the press conferences. Yeah, it's I have the press to be honest. I have to be honest. I watched 15 minutes of it and turned it off. Yeah, because I found it boring. Um, Frank Warren spent the next two days texting me, telling me how many social media engagements Queensbury alone have had, mm -hmm. which is was running at 11 and a half million. And I told you that this is going to be the biggest spectacle yeah. around. What did you make? of the press conference and what did you make of Tyson's positioning on a number of things? We'll get on to his blanket ban that we will and won't speak to in a minute. Yeah. But your takeaways the from takeaways the- takeaways um, from the press conference was what, exactly what I expected. It's, it's always going to be a little bit of a circus, if I'm honest, when it's the Tyson Fury press conference, you know, whether he comes in dressed up or whatever he does, he's a great salesman and that's what he is. And Garnu played his part as well. Um, look, I've accepted the fight for what it is. I understand what it is. And, and, and Frank's right in many ways, as in, it, listen, as a commercial, as a commercial thing, entity, it is, yeah. entity, it is going to be huge, right? You can't deny that. The crossover is going to be massive. Pay-per-view sales are going to be huge. And accept it for what it is. You know, we're not getting the fights that we originally wanted. We, we're not getting Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury. Don't think we're going to get AJ versus Deontay Wilder, by the way. I don't think we're going to get that anytime soon either. I've got a feeling that's that fight's sort of slipping away. There's talk of AJ now fighting in December, Wilder fighting in November. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, I accept it for what it is. I think it's going to be great entertainment. That's for sure. It's going to be fun. You know, it's it'll be it will be. It will go down as the biggest upset in boxing history if Ngannou could be. Well, I don't see a way that Ngannou can win the fight. That, that is for sure. No. He's big. He's slow. Look, he looks capable. He looks all right. I've been watching him on YouTube, watching him training. Mike Tyson implementing the stuff. Mike Tyson's a great student of the game, by the we way. We know that. A great student of the game. He's showing yeah. Ngannou certain So is Roy Jones things. Jr. He didn't stop Liam uh, yeah, Smith no, cleaning uh, Chris Eubank Jr.'s clock. Uh, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not saying that. No. So I'm not making a case here for Ngannou. What I'm saying is... He'll go in there. He'll give it a go. He's big. He's strong. Tyson can't get complacent. He's got to stay focused. Didn't look in great shape, by the way. Either did he at the at the um, press conference? No, difficult to see from those bloody awful suits. Yeah, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw him with his top off as well. Did you? Actually. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It didn't it didn't look particularly great? But shape, we're but... what? We're six weeks? No, we're not. Now we're about four weeks out, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and Tyson Fury's you know one oh, of those weeks. guys yeah. that. He comes into the ring. He's not one of those muscle-bound sort of guys or whatever. Anyway, but look, no. he's just got. To, he's got to keep his eye on the ball. That's what I'm saying. And Garnu, we know, is heavy-handed, dangerous with the right hand. They're training hard. They're working hard. But we're talking about levels here. We're talking about a guy that's not had a fight against a guy that's the number one heavyweight in the world. Yeah. But as, from an entertainment value, I think it's going to be good fun, and I think it's. I think it's going to be huge on the pay-per-views. See, I'm. I'm. I don't dispute. Never have disputed the validity of Frank's thinking and the thinking of their relationship that they're trying to engender in the Middle East. They, they are trying to open a gateway that can secure the biggest fights. They mm -hmm. don't think the current situation is delivering the big fights. Yeah. You know, the manner in which that's operated with Prince Khalid and the need to get a buy-in from, from, from certain aspects of the government to be able to achieve it, whereas you've got the PIF fund, yeah. which has got a dedicated environment specifically for sports, and it might... this. This event opens the doors sure. to a relationship of deliverables, which then would hopefully mean proper grown-up fights. Mm -hmm. And I don't dispute the validity of that. Frank yeah. keeps on going on about it being the biggest event that he's ever been involved in. And I don't dispute that. Yeah. Because it's, if you, as he said to me the other day, and he gets fed up with me saying that I'm bored of it, I don't want to hear it, I'm not interested in this fight, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a becoming fight sure. for the WBC champion of the world. Yeah. I, I understand what it is. But He's from the business paid. side, of, from it's, the business it's about side money. of you, it, it makes sense, but right? That's, but that, I'm fine with that. Yeah. When I did the podcast with Frank on another platform with my own podcast on Upfront, I talked specifically about Frank, just call it for what it is. It's just money. Yeah. There's no competitive jeopardy in this. This is not a proper grown-up fight. This is just two athletes 
from different disciplines, yeah. getting paid a vast amount of money for doing it, and you think it's a game changer for opening the door with the Middle Eastern guys mm -hmm. to be able to establish what we seem to have been unable to establish, which is the making of big fights. Sure. Everywhere else in Saudi, they want to go buy a golf uh, tour. Sure. They seem to be able to do it. They want to buy a Premier League football club. They seem to be able to do it. They want to be able to buy Premier League footballers. Mm -hmm. They seem to be able to do it, but it seems to evade them currently yeah. to put on heavyweight or big fights in Saudi Arabia sure. that the world's waiting for. So you Frank, there's a huge, huge appetite though for this fight. I mean, I do. I think there's a huge appetite well, clearly. for the crossover. And clearly. Even the boxing fans that say, you know, that are disappointed with obviously getting this fight over the Alexander Usyk one, they'll still tune in. They'll still clearly. watch it because it is a great event. Well, <laughs> It's self-evident. You know, Frank was very keen to tell me within hours of the press conference, the I told you, 11 million views for <laughs> Queensbury alone. Nobody doubts it. Nobody disputes it, Frank. No one is not suggesting that you aren't able to turn this sow's ear into a silk purse. Mm. Right? We know that there's going to be a maudlin and, and a, a, a sort of interest and intrigue because you've got two guys that are big in their respective sports. Yeah. But again, I can't escape the belief that you've got other business to attend to, Tyson, mm -hmm. and you're attending to this business. It's like we had this argument about two years ago when there was a seeming acceptance from everyone in the media and in the boxing fraternity that it was everybody else's job to get Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury 75 million quid for the fight each, yeah. right? And if they weren't going to get that, then it was unfair for them to have to fight for that. Yeah. And the pricing of the pay-per-view should be 40 quid so they can get to there. I mean, when did it become this tacit acceptance yeah. that we've got to get Tyson Fury as much money as we possibly can, rather than say, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lineal Champion, WBC Heavyweight Champion of the World, generationally the best fighter, why aren't you taking care of business in the bigger mm. fights as you get older, and as the time runs out, because there's only a finite amount of time, sure. we are not seeing what we want to see. What we're seeing is an opportunity for you to improve your bank balance. Mm -hmm. And I can't call that out for anything else than what that is. You're talking about modern eras, the, the greatest of the modern era of fight, people, fighters needing to well, fight each other. Come on. They're just postponing. I, no, I agree this is with great, what you're this saying. Is, this is great television. It's great event management. It's great... Uh, because you've got a crossover between those that are intrigued by MMA yeah. and those that are desperate for content. They're desperate for content. They'll watch Tyson Fury mm. because they're desperate for content. If Anthony Joshua were fighting Deontay Wilder on the same night, yeah. they wouldn't be tuning in to watch Tyson Fury, perhaps. Yeah. They would be yeah. perhaps watching a bona fight. There may be a case of Frank would say, no, oh, no, 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 no. They definitely categorically would. Mm. But Tyson also made some other observations that this isn't where this ends. We've got to endure more of it, mm. where he's potentially going to finish this particular job yeah. after telling us all oh, it's a real real jeopardy here and there's yeah. a real challenge here and this guy can hit really hard and he's got to be totally switched on whilst going in there looking not particularly fit, as you say. Mm -hmm. But he's going to go into the octagon himself. Yeah. So we're going yeah. to have to have more of this. Yeah. What does that, that say? What is that saying about, I want to be a Tyson Fury lover. I have been a Tyson Fury lover. Mm. I want to be a Tyson Fury admirer. I mean, ultimately, you, if, you, if, you're, you if you're not a, ty if you're not a Tyson Fury, Fury admirer, then you're in out. The octagon. Wouldn't you want to say No, uh, I don't want to see this one. See, I, I find that quite interesting. I, I would... Why? Well, there were other things... Fury, Fury's then as well going as, into as this well as, guy's sport. As, as well, well as. Yeah. as. No, as well as. But we're not seeing it as well as, are we? Mm. We're seeing it in spite of. Yeah. That's what our problem is. If we were seeing Tyson Fury just having finished a, a major heavyweight fight against... Someone of recognition, someone of significance, arguably the bigger guys, but if not the bigger guys, somebody like Joe mm. Joyce or Zilli Zhang or someone yeah. that we go, you know, it's a heavyweight fight, right? And then out of the ether comes the carnival of horrors. Yeah. And we, we all go, well, we've seen him do that, right? So, we, we, you know, but we haven't seen Tyson. What's the, what's the last meaningful fight Tyson Fury had? Do you think we see him Chisora, in a meaningful fight again? Do Dillian we actually White. see him in a meaningful fight? That is a, that's, that's another question. Well, this is why these questions are fair game. This is why this subject matter is fair game. This is why he should expect to have a little bit of disdain and vitriol because we were the ones that listened to him come out of the ring after destroying Dillian White. Mm. Different levels completely. Dillian White was a world-rated fighter that was made to look everything but that by Tyson Fury. Yeah. And then what we hoped for was, to, well, not Tyson to retire. Then he played hide-and-seek with himself for five minutes, telling everyone he wasn't going to fight again, making bets with Piers Morgan that he doesn't pay up on. Right, which is his gift if he wants to be that. I don't know why you say things you're not going to do, but that's what that's what seems to be the stock in trade. And now we've seen him fight Derek Chisora that nobody wanted to see. Yeah. But we knew that was on his bucket list because he said he was going to do that yeah. for, for Derek to give him a pension. 
but that was at the back end. Mm -hmm. and they brought that forward. And then we've sat here and we know that Frank says, well, we, no one's made us any offers. We've made like offers to other people and we accept all of that and take it at face yeah. value. But here we sit a year later after everyone going, well, I don't really want the Chisora fight. Mm. And the next cab off the rank is in Garnu. I don't know what people expect people to say. What? People get all nasty. And Tyson, I'm going to touch this point now because it can lead into there. Yeah. Tyson talking about haters. Because unless you give, unless you blow smoke up Tyson Fury's ass dawn till dusk, yeah. then you're a hater, right? Yeah. If you dare criticise, because he used to like me and he used to like Jim, I, right? I, doesn't I, like us so much now. No, I, 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 I sort of disagree with that because I think that he does still like you. I think he appreciates your honesty. I think he does appreciate it. But he honesty. won't speak to the BBC. and he won't, I don't blame him because the BBC are a bunch of virtuous little nitwits. <laughs> but, but, but he won't speak to talk sports. Yeah. And he's got mm. into that little mode at this moment in time, a bit like Connor's got into it, yeah. this little victim's complex, because yeah. unless you turn around and say, all, all hell, the Emperor Tyson, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be spoken to. Yeah. He has taken that stance. Sure. What do you think to that? Yeah, well, listen, everyone's, everyone's entitled to their opinion and, and people are going to have strong opinions about this fight and Tyson should be, accept that, if I'm totally honest, because he knows what people want. And, you know, I don't know the politics behind it all. You know, Frank says, we, we have no, we've had no offers. We can't make these big fights. Tyson wants to go in these big fights, but why they're not made? We're going to take these other fights. And, you know, this crossover fight with Ngannou is a huge fight. And, and like I've said, you know, it, it is massive for the entertainment world, especially. And it is going to earn him a lot of money. So I totally understand where Tyson's coming from from that. But we do need to get the best versus the best about the modern eras. And we need to see Tyson in them fight sooner rather and than that's later. What we, and that's totally what, agree with and that. And we, we should all agree, and I agree with you, that that's right to do in this instance, which is what I've done from the get-go. If you have, to, if you must... If you have to have this fight, right, yeah. because you're, you're short of a few, Bob, right, and you need <laughs> to have this fight, Tyson, then, then we'll all empathise with that and we'll all put our 1995 down to help you in your polite for your next Bugatti or whatever it is that you need and alongside your Netflix show that is obviously not keeping the walls from the door. We'll all patronise that. But here's the trade-off. Yeah. You've got to fight someone meaningful. We need it. You've got to fight someone meaningful now or... Why aren't the WBC stepping in and saying, yeah. that's quite enough of this now? Mm. Rather than making ridiculous mock belts yeah. for WBC, I mean, how much more fawning can Mauricio Solomon get? Can he get his tongue any further up Tyson Fury's mm. backside? Yeah. A while ago, it was, he's a lineal champion. He should be able to do what he wants. He's an absolute credit to us. No mandatory. Now, now then, no yeah. mandatory. Yeah. Now you're making a WBC belt for this mockery of a fight. Yeah. Right? And it's so sycophantic, it's making me feel ill. But should there not be a point, surely, where we say to Tyson Fury, if you don't start fighting inside your yeah. predominant sport, yeah. you're actually not doing the sport. Well, he's in danger. He, he, he's service. in danger of damaging his his legacy. That is for sure. Like I think that. All right, look, we know what you know. We know what's going on with this fight. The fight's happening October the twenty eighth. Great. This is going to be great entertainment. Looking forward to the whole thing. Once Tyson Fury gets the job done, which he will do, looking at Ngannou, you know, he's big, he's strong, dangerous with the right hand, but slow, and that's yeah. going to be a big problem with him, someone against like Fury. Once we get this fight out of the way, we need to see Fury in with Alexander Usyk. We need that fight to happen. We need and, to and, see, and by the way, he'll destroy Alexander Fury. Usyk as well. Sorry? And he'll destroy he'll Alexander Usyk. He'll ragdoll him. Yeah. That, that, that's the point. Like this, yeah. it, For me, after watching Usyk against Daniel Dubois, it, sort of, it, uh, it made me recognise even more so that how far apart how far apart yeah. he was from Tyson Fury. T Tyson Fury was he would he would match him with boxing IQ because Fury's very good and he he would just he would bully him and ragdoll him. I think Fury's leagues above Alexander Usyk after what I watched against Daniel Dubois. So I go, let's get that fight on Tyson. Let's make it happen. Let's cement your place in history of boxing. And he needs to do that. He needs to fight Joshua. He needs to fight Usyk because everyone's got to fight the best of the modern era to create legacies. And I think that's what he that's what's needed now. Do you think he's got some? Um... In fairness to him, because we're talking about him now, so it's difficult to dispute his aversion of events. But he talks, Tyson talks about the critics of this fight. I mean, this, 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 I hate this expression of haters, because it's just people that don't agree with your point of view. Yeah. Go away, educate yourself, we'll come the next expression. And then when you've come out to my point of view, you can have a conversation with me. No, I don't agree with you. I think it's a crap fight. Um, I hate us. I'm just using his name for clickbait. Do you think right. that's... Do you think it's fair? Because no. we're sitting there talking about Tyson Fury. There'll be views on this because it's got mm. Tyson Fury in the strap. Yeah. And there's criticism inside it. So does he not have a point about the fact that the interest level is generated by him 
Yeah. And no one's going to be interested if we're all turning around and saying, it's a wonderful fight. We're all looking forward to this so much. Tyson Fury has to accept criticism going into this fight. And he, and he must know that, like, because of, you know, the every everybody, everybody wants to see Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, undisputed title fight. Everyone, an even bigger fight for me is Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. It's a fight that the public wants to see. So going into this fight, he must have to, he must know that he's going to get criticism for that. And it's not haters. People recognise that Fury is the number one heavyweight. Yeah, comes from a position of admiration. In the it world right comes, now. The irony of it is it comes from a position of admiration. Yeah. An expectation. Because if he was worth nothing to people, then no one would be interested. Absolutely. So it's the polar opposite of what I he think thinks it's frustration is. more than anything. Yeah. No, it's, that, that's what it is. It's frustration. It's not hate. It's frustration because we want to see these fights happening sooner rather than later. We, it seems like we've been waiting for these fights to happen for like the best part of three years now. And we're still not getting it. And then the Ngannou fight comes in. So it's not hate. It's not hating. It's, it's frustration. Just, it's disappointment, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the big thing takeaway from this is that Frank Warren's got to have his feet held to the fire post this fight. Yeah. Because he has sold everybody a vision that this is a game-changing event. Yeah. They're opening the Riyadh Festival and all of that goes with that, which means bugger all to all of us, right? Yeah. But it will mean something, ultimately, to the opportunity to make bigger fights. That's the thing that's been sold to us. Right. So, Frank, when that, when that, when that bell rings for the first round and God knows how long it lasts and it finishes, mm -hmm. the first question out of people's mouths should be, thank you, Frank, for that. Everyone's made a big bag of money. Now, when are we getting proper fights? That's it. And that's the that's conversation it. that needs to happen next. Yeah. Tyson doesn't help the issue because he's made three observations, hasn't he, about what he wants to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming he's, he wants to he wants to beat Ngano, obviously, and become what he considers to be the baddest man in the world. Yep. I assume that might be a... A, a, a nod in the direction of Mike Tyson, who's in his corner because yeah. he was originally, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, denoted as the baddest man on, on the planet. He wants to top the Forbes list as the richest athlete this year, which of course is all our job to help him with. Yeah, um, well, he's going to do that. I think and he wants well. to do a Hollywood movie. Yeah, all right, well, Adam's Family or something like that. No, <laughs> I think they're all achievable. You know, have right. you seen the success that he's had with that net, that Netflix story at home with a few is that I'm saying. Have you seen it? Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah, I'm actually in it. I think you're in it as well. Actually, am I? You are. Yeah, episode oh, nine. Oh, okay. Episode nine with me. Oh, really? Yeah. What am I doing? We're speaking about Tyson Fury. Oh, are we? Okay. Yeah. Clickbait. <laughs> yeah, right. me, you, and Jim. Yeah. I watched it. Um, I watched. I did. Yeah, I did no, watch actually, the first no, I don't episode. Mind it. I like it. I, but I live with two girls at home, so. I'm used right. to watching that sort of TV. Okay. Yeah. So no, I, but I didn't none, mind none it. the point. None but of that. It, it none of what he said was, "I'm going to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world." Yeah. None of that. When I asked him I what think, he wants I, to do I next, I, know why. I want to be the baddest man in the world by beating an MMA fighter. Mm. I want to be the richest athlete this year. Yeah. And I want to be in a movie. Yeah. I think I know why though. I think I know why. I think it's frustration from Tyson Fury's side. Tyson Fury originally wanted to get these fights on. He was trying to make the fight with Anthony Joshua that fell through for financial reasons. I think they're trying to make the fight with Alexander Usyk fell through probably for financial reasons. And I think it's frustration from him sitting on the sidelines waiting for a fight. It looked like he wasn't going to get the fight. Now he's got Ngannou. But he, was, he wanted a meaningful fight. For one reason or another, that meaningful fight never happened. And I think that he's now just f for talking about... But, you know, well, he's the one that talks about it. Saying, yeah, no, but I'm saying that's why it's not in his wish list now. Right. That's where I'm at with it. I think he's just fed up with going, you know what? It is what it is. We're going to go there and if, they, if I can't make them fights, I'll make a sack load of money over here and that's what it is. Do you think he's, Do you think this situation where he's not talking to platforms is going to change? I mean, you, I just made the case, yeah. right? Because once upon a time, Tyson Fury used to phone in and tell everybody how much he loved the show and how yeah. much he loved TalkSport and how much he loved the things that I used to say because they were yeah. about other people yeah, 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 <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and supported him. Now that they're not so much, yeah. right? he's in a different space. You're saying, no, 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 I think he's all right. I think he's fine about that. But he's not talking to people. At the moment. Right, so and I all... believe he will. I believe he will. I think it's just... Because I think it's about... I think it's frustration. I think it's frustration, not from yourself on TalkSport um, and not from... I don't believe myself because I've not really gone against this fight, if I'm totally honest. But you I think sure it's not you? I think it possibly could be. Could be you. But um, I think there's other people then? on. I, I think who? there's, who? I, I who? Think there's who? other people on the platform well, that have not them. been who? supporters who? of it. People like maybe Adam Catterall done so with pull Nick yourself P. Together. Um, You've got to support and, this. It's a meaningful event. No, but I, I, I just think that it, the. I think Fury was frustrated at that, and I think that that sort of yeah him off a little bit. I think he'll come round to it. TalkSport's a huge platform. You need that to sell the fight. You know, it, it, it I needs gotta be the honest, coverage. Man. I couldn't care less. 
Yeah, I know, but you've always said that from day I one. I couldn't care less. I totally understand. If you're, you're if a you're... hardcore boxing fan, see, yeah. and you you want to see the best fighting the best. Mm. Totally understand that, as I do. Yeah. But I think that while the politics of the sport are in the way, and so I, I understand where Tyson's going, making a sack load of money, yeah. entertainment, it'll cross over, it'll touch... It would, it would be a different demographic watching this fight than, than normally watch these big big time fights. That is a fact. You know, the, this fight will be huge for, that, for all those reasons. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't care less. I, understand. If, I couldn't care less if he comes on or not. I, yeah. I want people of substance. I think Tyson Fury is a man of substance. I think he should take equal criticism and praise in equal measure. Not be a little yes. baby and, yeah. and cry about things. Not be like other people that are saying people are saying things which they're not. Not be like Nigel Benn turning around and saying things that aren't true. At least the one thing I can say about yeah. Eddie Hearn is that when Eddie Hearn has something to say, he fronts it up. Yeah. You know, we'll have a disagreement. Eddie Hearn will come on and confront me about the disagreement and he will come out with credibility or not in certain instances. Yeah. Look, let's move that's on. why I think he'll come around for all those reasons. Well, I, I think that he'll come on and I think and maybe, he'll definitely come on your show and, maybe, and you'll have that conversation. And maybe if we are interested in having him, we'll allow him to be on. Maybe that's the perspective. <laughs> you'd, um, love to, you'd love to have him on and have a good chat with him about this the, because I think you'd the, like the, to the get Tyson your point The Tyson Fury that I saw in the dressing room for the Dillian White I'd, 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 I would have on every day of the week and twice yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. The Tyson Fury that phones on with a load of old right, I want to be paid half a billy yeah. or I've got the ump because someone's criticising something I've done. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. thank you very much. Not interested in you. Sure. That's not a superstar. That's a child. Right, so Tyson, if you're listening, if you're listening, let's get the Tyson Fury that was in the dressing room. Come on, speak to Simon. Be the superstar. let's get this sorted out. Be the superstar out. that you are. Um, there you go. Or were. Um, oh. Oh. He still is. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, hopefully Francis Ngannou doesn't put him on a seat of his pants. <laughs> well, listen. Wouldn't that be funny? That's why you're going <laughs> to... That'd be funny. <laughs> that's why you're going to have the crossover because it, that is that yeah. thing. What's in Francis yeah. Ngannou's yeah. in the Guinness Book of Records for the biggest... Punch, hardest punch of all time, right? I don't know anything about crossing. You know about you've, only got a, you've only got to land on the old Vera. I, I understand. But yeah. You know more about cross dressing than crossovers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on to a big fight coming up, um, which um, I'm fascinated by. I think it's an unwise fight. It's obviously the return and the rematch between Joe Joyce and Zhili Zhang. Yes. Coming up uh, on September 23rd. Day now before, that's a real fight. Day now before my birthday. Never, yeah. that, that is a real I'm fight. I'm going to that. I'm looking forward to it. Um, day before your birthday? Day before my birthday. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, Happy birthday, son. No, I don't want to. Don't, All cards don't, coming in. Money is what I'm oh, looking for money? from you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't help you there, but anyway. We, we've got it. We're covering it next yes. Saturday week. Um, this is a huge fight for Joe Joyce yeah. because A, it, I think it's career defining for him, but B, he's got an unlock. He's got to overcome this particular yeah. conundrum that he's yeah. created for himself. How is he going to do this? Great question, great question. So, right, I've been thinking about this and going through it. I watched the fight again earlier on, hurt early in, in, in the second uh, second round and never really recovered from that. Tactically, he got it all wrong. He couldn't get out of the way of Zilli Zhang who boxes out the southpaw stance, landing those big left crosses through the middle. How does Joe Joyce overcome it? Right, so here we are. Zilli Zhang weighed in at 19 stone 8 for that fight. Joe Joyce weighed in a career lightest of 18 stone 2. Why did he do that? I'm really not sure. A career best performance from me for Joe Joyce was when he boxed Joseph Parker Indeed. and he weighed 19 stone free. Now, this is how he overcomes How much did he weigh it. against Daniel Dubois? Do you know? Was no, he, was he big around, on that? around the 19 stone right. mark. So this, is that, so this is where we were at, right? 18 stone two. So he was too light, hence whilst, whilst he was getting marked up, he was getting caught with shots, he was sitting in the pocket. So what Joe Joyce needs to do, this is, this is from me, work, the way I think, I think he needs to control the space for one. He was standing too close to Zilli Zhang, who has deceptively quick hands for a big guy. Yep. Zilli Zhang's got really slow feet. So if you if you have not got the adaptability, which Joe Joyce hasn't, so if you can't, I think what they were planning on was coming in light, Joe Joyce using this more mo movement, more speed, and that was never going to work for Joe. Do you think Zilli Zhang has got deceptively quick hands? Did he look deceptively he quick? He has. Let me ask you the question. Yeah. Let me finish the question and yeah. then before you jump into the conclusion. Okay. Did you think that he had deceptively quick hands when he fought Filip Hergovic? I'm glad you asked the question because, yes, I did. Did you? That was the thing that right. I really caught my eye. The reason why I was asking is because was it more to do with the fact that Joe's reactions were so slow? No. Or are you simply saying he's got quick hands? He's got quick hands. And got quick feet. That's what he called Herbie, Hergovic, yeah. who's a, a, a much better technically yeah. boxer than Joe Joyce. Yeah was really surprised by the hand speed of Zilli Zhang. Whenever Hergovic got there, Zhang met him with the shots, put quick hands in, and that was surprising. When I was sitting there ringside for that one, I was thinking, wow, this guy, like, for a big guy, has got incredibly quick hands. I think Joe Joyce underestimated that. I think the complacency played its part. He went in there, thought, I, I can walk through people, mm. juggernaut, steam through. He'd bought he got, into the, he, he'd he bought bought into, into, he'd bought into yes. the idea that whatever you hit me with, 
I'm it bounces walk off me. But yeah. uh, do you know why it didn't bounce off? Because he come in at 18 stone two. Right. I think Joe Joyce needs to come in at least a stone heavier because we know that he's not going to be out of move, right? So it's going to be a case of meeting fire with fire and he's going to have to outwork, take Zilly Zhang into the later rounds where we know Zhang tires and Joe Joyce gets stronger and that's where he'll overtake. But in those early rounds where it's going to be dangerous, Joyce has to control the space. He's got to get the timing right. So he's got to, what he was doing was he was sitting in the pocket. Zhang was zip shooting off of the left crosses and catching Joyce every time. Yeah. Joyce needs to get his hands tighter. He needs to control the space, be half a foot out of distance and wait for Zhang to go, try and set a couple of traps and then go with his own punches. But it's got to be educated pressure. There was no education about what he was doing at all. He just tried to bulldoze him mm. and that was a huge problem. Were you surprised? I, think, I mean, I was surprised at the events that unfolded in front of me because I thought that obviously we know Joe ships punishment. Yeah. We know he gets and takes a lot of shots. He took a lot of shots against Carlos Tackham, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he took a lot of right. shots against Joseph, Joseph Parker. Parker. Right. Exactly right. But this guy, given the size of this guy, and we've got to price in the fact that yeah. he's 41 years of age and say, okay, but yeah. the size of this guy, that's where the, 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 the damage was done by the very nature of a reduced size in Joe Joyce, a huge size in Zhili Zhang, and all the power that goes behind it. Yeah. But Joe's psychological reaction initially was so low key, but that's his personality, isn't it? Yeah. He was like, you know, his one of his mum got involved in the discussion, and it was all very. Yeah, his mum went into me actually about me and you. Well, yeah, 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 but yeah. because he didn't come on, didn't he? he had his yeah, hair braided, right? right? Um, but he was sort of laissez faire about it, or wasn't yeah. he? And sort of relaxed about it. It was one of those evenings, and I think all of us said, "This is probably not a fight that he should take again. He should yeah. go away, rebuild himself somewhere else." But I guess he, from the positioning of retaining some opportunity to get a world title shot. He has to do it. He has to do he, this. You know, he, like, what is he now, Joe Joyce? He's 37 years of age. 30, mm -hmm. Is he 37, 38? Yeah, yeah. Coming, yeah, coming up 38. Coming up 38, yeah. So it's a fight he has to go over again. It was We initially said, don't not go there. Don't go yeah. near that. Now it's sort of like, I thought, you know what? Time to think about it. And I think, well, it's a tough job, this. A real tough job because... I know that Joe fights one way and one way only. That's why I think the way that he wins this fight, do not come in at 18 stone whatever. You need to come Be in at 19, strong, yeah. 19 stone plus because you've got meet to meet fire with fire. fire. Beat, meet fire yeah. with fire. Yeah. And that's how you do it, right? Joe, Joe needs to keep moving to his left, away from that left hand, which is the danger shot. And he needs to just... He, he needs to outwork and out hustle mm. Zali Zhang, and that's the way that he does it. Because if he comes in light again and thinks that he can use... His feet he ain't can't quick. That, can like, you can't... You can't all of a sudden turn at this no. stage of his career, his feet quick or whatever. Because I'm going, right, if Has he got the same corner? He's got the same corner. Because that makes yeah. it, I mean, no disrespect to the corner because they'll, they have I forgot. I just think tactically they got it so wrong last time. But they, but they, as but in they, with but the, the weight question. and whatnot. No disrespect to the corner because they've forgotten more than I'll ever know. Yeah. But it does seem like a perverse logic, doesn't it? Yeah. To suggest that you go in against a giant of a man yeah. by going in at your lightest. Everything you've done that's been successful yeah. has been heavy. And strong, and yeah. being at your being, being at a weight that would is reflective of what you are comfortable being at. All of a sudden, you change the whole dynamics it's, for the biggest guy you fought. It's a classic example of it. If it ain't broke, don't fix but it. But that's what my, that's my question. I suppose is that the training. I, mean, I don't know how much the trainers, the corner missed the, the missed the ball. Yeah, you I know, just, it's I, like this argument that reverberates around the Rob McCracken, Anthony Joshua situation yeah. for the Ozick fight. How can sure. a trainer of that level have allowed Joshua to fight the fight the way yeah, that he did? Yeah. Is is Joe Joyce a similar character where he rows his own boat? I think I think Joe Joyce is because of the way that he fights, like, and it's te technically not particularly great. great. Yeah. Like what he does, where, where his mo his main strengths are is in it's in his name really, the juggernaut. He just, yeah. you know, he's slow. Yeah. He's a little bit one dimensional, but so he's was a, George he, he's, Yeah, he's, exactly. He's effective when he does what he does best. So why would you come in at eighteen stone? I just, I mean, I don't get it. I'll go, Joe. You need to come into this fight. Forget like because at nineteen stone three when he was against Joseph Parker. He was ripped. He had abs or whatever. Well, he's come a in giant, at isn't he? Come in at nineteen three. Come in at nineteen seven and beat the guy at his own game. Because Zilly Zhang is Zilly Zhang's quite smart technically. You yeah. see him. He takes little step backs. He's dangerous with left hand. He's got a particularly dangerous right hook over the top as well. Joe's got to be careful of that. So he's got to keep nice and tight. He's got to be educated in what he does, and he needs to beat me his own game. Yeah.